Hey guys, so the um, topic I decided to talk about is concept mapping. And most of you have seen a concept map. This is an example. Some people I think call them like bubble charts. But I think these are interesting because everyone has used one of these at some point in their life. And you can use a concept map for any kind of subject. So I'm gonna go over kind of a summary of the article from the book. So how did they originate? So concept maps were originally developed to observe changes in children's understanding of basic science concepts in grades first through 12. Soon after this, those people discovered concept maps are a powerful tool for any subject matter domain. Now they are being used at, all over the world. Corporations and governmental aid organizations are using concept maps to enhance research, resolve organizational problems, and capture knowledge. In the classroom, concept maps require learners to move toward meaningful learning strategies. They enhance learners' confidence in their learning, and they are useful in identifying student misconceptions and facilitating remediations. The research evidence, the many studies using concept maps as an assessment or a scoring scheme with some type of modification depending on the subject or the topic. So some of the suggested scoring themes are propositions, hierarchy, crosslinks, and specific examples for how to use these. So this is um, a concept map that I found that I find very useful, especially if you teach Algebra 1, even Algebra 2. This is a graphing functions concept map. So within Algebra 1 and Algebra 2, you, you do a lot of graphing and you do a lot of graphing of different types of functions. And here it shows you when you are transforming graphs down here, how are they the same? These transformations are true for all functions. And it tells you how they are different. And it tells you what they look like. This is just an incredibly useful tool that I think we could all use in any subject area, even in math. 